this week on the spotlight. The White Sox are sinking. Does Robin Ventura have any answers? Maybe not. We go back to a great Hall of Fame bear, Richard Dent. And then we continue with flashbacks. One of the great receivers in Bears history, Curtis Conway. And then we flash back with the Cubs to a catcher. We won't tell you his name yet. You'll have to stay tuned. Check out my website, Benkowski.com, for my weekly article and up-to-the-minute trivia sites. From wherever Chicago sports teams are making news, this is the 25th year of the Lansing Floral Sports Spotlight. Flowers for every imaginable occasion at Lansing Floral Shop. Call them at 708-474-1212. They deliver. You've got to get to Jack Desmond's Irish Pub. They have my trivia game there, Wednesday, August 7th and the 21st at 8 p.m. $10 domestic buckets on Wednesday, 103.39 South Ridgeland, and Rebecca is running around serving everybody at Jack Desmond's. Be there. Want to get a haircut from a great hairstylist? Call mine, Rose Murillo, 312-726-2201. With a 30 year Southwest Side tradition, Huckfin is open 24 hours to serve you with great breakfasts like the Becky Thatcher, soups, great lunches, one third pound burgers, clubs, and much more. Dinners from seafood to steaks to pasta, great donuts, and ice creams. With three locations at Archer and Damon, 67th and Pulaski, and 105th and Cicero, stop in today. You know Huckfin is open. Demi Tas Coffee Shop is a great place to go. 1066 West Taylor, right off the UIC campus. Breakfast, lunches, mochas, lattes, cappuccino, tea, baked goods, superb French toast, great chicken salad. Open Tuesday through Sunday. Get to Demi Tas on Taylor. You'll like it. Dave McLean Antiques, conveniently located, 2716 West 111th Street, 11 a.m. to 5 p.m., six days a week. Always buying and selling quality antiques, art, silver, coins, vintage bicycles, great wholesale prices, and dealers are welcome. Dave McLean Antiques. Sam and Sons Jewelers. Easy to reach at 10640 South Cistro. Custom made jewelry. They buy, they sell, they trade, they repair. Certified loose diamonds and gemstones. But remember, you can sell them and trade at Sam and Sons Jewelers. You've got to get to Calabria Imports, like I do, where I shop for Italian foods and the deli, 1905 West 103rd Street. If you want to call for catering or sandwiches, they'll make stuff up ahead of time, 773-396-5800. But Calabria on 103rd Street has it all. Robin Ventura pulled Alex Rios out of a game for not hustling. I asked him if he should have done that earlier in the year. He said, no, you can't keep pulling players out all the time. I think he was incorrect. But anyway, here's more of uh, Robin's interview. I mean, I haven't asked him or anything like that, but it, it, it can. I mean, I've seen it in the past of playing with guys that, you know, there is a frustration that, that happens. And um, I don't know, maybe your subconscious isn't quite where it needs, is, is as sharp as, as focusing on what you need to because your name's always brought up. And um, it, that, that's part of it, and you have to be able to put that aside and, and just play. Hey, Robin, do you talk to Rios about this, or have you talked to him? Just, just kind of let it go. No, I mean, it was, again, it's it's simple. Um, you know, it's been brought up before, uh, not like him personally, but just as a team, and, you know, he understands it. Is there any pitch count uh, limit on Jake today? I wouldn't. I, I don't think so. I mean, it's one of the, I don't look at it as a pitch count. I think you look at it more as, uh, you know, how he's doing physically. It's going to be hot, and you kind of go from there. I know he threw about 84, five pitches in his rehab start, so uh, I, I wouldn't expect him to go to his normal 120. But, uh, you know, I, I, you know, anywhere from 90 to 100, probably good for him. Done in Gillespie or in Los Angeles? Yeah. Yeah, Tanner's trying to fight to get in there, but might not make it. Here I ask Robin if he'll be experimenting with different guys in the lineup in the second half now that they're out of it. 
think right now, you know, you can because, um, you know, you can get a Morel in there that's different. But, you know, I think if Pauly was here, Pauly would be the guy at first. Um, and Kep would be at third. So there, there are ways to use a, f- a few more guys right now just because of, of Pauly not being in there. It, it kind of, you know, you can, you can mess with that. So um, there will be different guys used. I, I just, you know, it's on a daily basis. I'm not purposely trying to, like, you know, evaluate. We're trying to win a game. Do you expect a uh, fallback Monday? Is that the target? Or I hope so. I mean, I haven't talked to him, but, I'm, you know, li- listening to what Herm says, he, he feels pretty good. I asked Robin if he remembered being a player, having a crappy start, and then his team rallying to get into contention late in the year. Um, no, usually when we were, when we were out of it, we were out of it. But uh, I, you know, again, it's one of those we have we have better players here than when the teams I were on that were out of it, kind of early. So um, you know, it's just different. I, I think we get through this, and I think we would be better off just because of all the rumors and everything else of guys going places. it's July's been difficult for that reason, of making sure you're focused on the right stuff. So, um, you know, it, it eventually will get better. What's, what's the key to, to staying professional and giving your best effort when a team it's, is It's so not always out? easy when, when the, you know, rumors are there for getting traded and things like that. But, again, it, it's... It's one of those to be professional. You got to come and, and play and win a game. And you know, I think for these guys coming in, this this game goes on Jake's record. And and there is a, a accountability you have the teammates and everything else to do everything you can to try and win that game because it stays with everybody forever. These numbers are forever, and they go on your name. I asked Robin if he was satisfied with his team leadership amongst players. He would seem like a lot of the guys would try to lead by example. We have a combination of that, but, you know, again, it's my job that, you know, whatever is not there, then, then I make up for it. You've got to get to Lansing Floral Shop. Open at 8 a.m. daily. Besides a great array of live flowers, they have custom silks, Bridgewater candles. They want you to plan your parties early at a wide delivery area. They're located at 3420 Ridge Road in Lansing, or you can call 708-474-1212. Weddings, funerals, birthdays, anniversaries, and guys, try the No Reason Flower. Believe me, it works. Lansing Floral Shop. Give them a call, 708-474-1212. You've got to get to Kelly's Tavern. You'll have a good time. I'm cracking up thinking about it. Next one is Friday, August 2nd at 8 p.m., of course. Come out and play, bring your friends, it's fun. Kelly's Tavern, 44th and Wallace, see you over there. Cornelio's Mobile Auto Glass, easy to reach at 773-908-6081. You call them and they come to you and they'll fix your window right in front of your house. Lowest prices, new and used, open Monday through Saturday, 9 a.m. to 6 p.m. They'll do a great job for you as they did for me. Cornelio's. Amelia's Bar and Grill, a great place to eat at 46th and Halsted. They're open for lunch and dinner daily, private parties and catering, a unique mixture of fine dining and Mexican specialties prepared by my friend, Chef Eusebio Garcia. Check out Amelia's Bar and Grill. Nothing like it. It's at 46th and Halsted. We're back in the Benkowski Bear Spotlight. We're at Leonello's downtown in the McClure Court Center. I'm Pat Benkowski with Richard Dent. We're having a great time. Time's you flying. Betcha. Time flies when you're having fun, right, Richard? You betcha. I bet it was flying in that second half yesterday when uh, you started getting in there and chasing Vinny all over the place, right? Not really, you know, because when it's cold, people, people always call in time out, you know, to mess with your mind and stuff like that. <laughs> That's what Coach Dicker does when he plays Green Bay or anybody that comes in town when it's cold. And, uh, you call time out just to make him get colder? <laughs> <laughs> it's a mind game. The cold, the cold weather is a mind game. You have to put your mind to it and do it. You know, when I first got here in 83, we played the Packers, and it was about uh, 15 below and 48 wind chill factor. And let me tell you, I was frostbitten. 
in July. I was still felt that, you know, so <laughs> I later. pray that we don't have another day like that, though. Well, uh, you still got it done. About getting up, uh, we got a couple of sacks in the second half, and the defense started to dominate, although you did give up one touchdown. Did you feel that uh, being ahead, knowing that Testaverde was going to have to pass, that that was a time to really just tee off? Sure. Uh, well, they didn't really open up their offensive uh, game plan until about seven minutes left in the game. Um, the rest of the time, they was throwing the ball very quick. He was dropping five, you know, sometimes six, seven yards, but uh, that's a very short drop, and he's six, about six, five, so he get a good view of what's going on. That's what really helped Vinny, and um, I thought that uh, if we could have kept the points the way we kept them and continue putting points on the board, then sooner or later they would have to open up the offense. But most people, you know, they keep a lot of people in to block us, and they try to throw, you know, a timing route, which is you're talking about a, a good three seconds, no more. Does it get you mad when you're getting close and close and close and you just can't get the hand on that quarterback? I'm not going to tell you what I really say because you told me about Steve McMichael last time. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. It was right bloops, here. So. <laughs> it was right here. <laughs> yeah, it, it really ticks you off, you know, because, uh, you know, you work so hard and you throw the ball so quick and, you know, you just get upset and you just, you just save that for, you know, that one lick that you look for and then... Uh, <laughs> It kind of makes up, then you want to do it again. Because <laughs> it felt so good that time. Yeah. Well, we got some, uh, some uh, a brief interview that we got with one of the offensive mates uh, uh, of yours, Jim Covert, who'd been out of the lineup. And uh, he made a triumphant return yesterday. He'd been struggling mm -hmm. with the back trouble. And uh, he came back and played uh, alternate series with Wojo. And we talked to Jim about coming back from his injury. Yeah, you know, I, I think so. But I just... Uh, you know, I, I just got to give a lot of credit to uh, Fred Cato. He really, he really, uh, you know, I worked hard and I needed to, uh, I was, just wasn't ready when I came back the first time. I tried to come back too early and, and I needed to work out and uh, really work myself hard twice a day. And Fred Cato really helped me out and, and uh, did a good job with me. But, you know, I, I just thank God every day when I get up because I, you know, I, uh, my back was hurting me when I first tried to play. Now it doesn't as much anymore, and uh, it feels like it almost felt like it did before. So, you know, I just, um, I got to give all the praise to God because he, he brought me through this because it was tough because I didn't play all year, you know, and it's, uh, it's a lot of adversity, and, you know, uh, it's pretty tough. It was tough, but I'm just glad I'm back. When you first did return, were, were you concerned that you weren't totally healed yet, or, or did, 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 was it ultimately mostly conditioning that you needed to fix? What do you mean when I first came back in uh, September? No, when you first came back and then decided that you couldn't play again. Well, in September, I, you know, it was just basically, I, you know, I wasn't strong enough, you know, and uh, my back wasn't strong, and, and I guess I try to treat it like a knee injury, you know, where you, uh, where you, uh, um, you know, get scoped and come back and play, but but uh, uh, what happened was I just wasn't ready. My muscles atrophied in my back and in my stomach and everything, and I just wasn't ready. So <clears throat> I, I guess I just try to go with that basic mentality. You just want to get it back out in the field as fast as you can, and then I just made a mistake. But this time, you know, Fred Cato uh, helped me out, and we really worked, we worked our butts off for three, four weeks. Glad to have him back in the lineup. What was the worst injury you ever had that kept you out of the lineup? in your football career? Well, um, once in college, I broke my radius, which, which is the same break that uh, William had. And they put a play down, and I was out for a week. And I was back. Wow. I was back playing within a week. And you were back in a week? And he's out for the season. Sure, well, you know, I... <laughs> <laughs> Come on. I'm sorry, but... Give him a break. <laughs> well, uh, well, he had something else broke, you oh, know, his okay. wrist. Okay. So he had two breaks. I had one break, okay. so that's why he's out. All right. <laughs> but, uh, no, uh, I, I, I was able to get back and play and play in a playoff game, you know, and before you know it, season was over and NFL draft was coming around. Did you knock anybody pretty good with that plate? <laughs> no. <laughs> it sounds like a weapon. Well, no, not really. You know, it's it's something that I had to get removed because I had six screws in it. Oh, it was on the inside. Right. Oh, okay. It was inside so much. Oh, okay, I thought inside it was, of my arm. It was going around like a battering no. ram, <laughs> like some kind of gal gladiator movie. <laughs> That's not for Richard Dent. He's the guy with the metal. Something else, Pat. <laughs> <laughs> I want to ask you too about stay in terms of staying in the lineup. 
you uh, you went through a real harrowing experience earlier in the year, mm -hmm. and you're fortunate to. With a 30-year Southwest Side tradition, Huckfin is open 24 hours to serve you with great breakfasts like the Becky Thatcher, soups, great lunches, one-third pound burgers, clubs, and much more. Dinners from seafood to steaks to pasta, great donuts, and ice creams. With three locations at Archer and Damon, 67th and Pulaski, and 105th and Cicero, stop in today. You know Huckfin is open. You've got to get to Lansing Floral Shop. Open at 8 a.m. daily. Besides a great array of live flowers, they have custom silks, Bridgewater candles. They want you to plan your parties early at a wide delivery area. They're located at 3420 Ridge Road in Lansing, or you can call 708-474-1212. Weddings, funerals, birthdays, anniversaries, and guys, try the No Reason Flower. Believe me, it works. Lansing Floral Shop. Give them a call, 708-474-1212. Little Frank's Pizzeria and Bar. Thursday, Buck 50 Miller Old Style. And of course, my trivia games alternate Thursdays. The next one, August 1st at 8 p.m. You know they have $12 large pizza and pitcher all day, every day? Easy to reach at 79th and Narragansett. Check out Little Frank's. You'll be glad you did. Perfect Pitch Auto Repair at 108th and Kedzie. Does tune-ups, transmission, AC service, engine repair, tire repair, oil changes, and emission system repair. They're open Monday through Friday from 8 a.m. to 6 p.m., and they've done a great job for me. Perfect Pitch Auto Repair at 108th and Kedzie. Talking with Scott Service, and certainly, I, you got to admit, fan support has been there. Uh, th they have been loyal uh, throughout for you. Oh, yeah, Cup fans are the, the greatest. Uh, they come out every day and cheer us on and try to get us going. Uh, unfortunately, we haven't played that well on this home stand. I hopefully get it turned around uh, this series with Pittsburgh. Talk a little bit about uh, your growing up uh, in Wisconsin. That, that really is sort of an unlikely place for professional baseball players to come from. A lot of Californians, a lot of Texans. I'm sure you, your club's loaded with some Floridians and uh, Latin ball players. But uh, you didn't exactly have the greatest climate for a long baseball season growing up. No, I really didn't, uh, you know, growing up in Wisconsin. But it was an opportunity for me. And I got to play all the sports growing up, uh, doing a lot of different things. And, uh, you know, it just worked out. Baseball was a, a good fit for me. I got a chance to go to college, played some college ball, and then, you know, got into pro ball, and it uh, really gave me an opportunity there. But, you know, it isn't conducive. You know, you play about 14 or 15 high school games in a short college season. But uh, a lot of times uh, when you play that, you know, small amount of games, you put a little extra effort into them, and it worked out good for me. I'd like to develop a little bit about uh, your current situation with the pitching staff. Uh, you know, there's been there's great games followed by not so great games, and I wanted to feel how in sync you are with your starters with uh, just about a year under your belt with them. Well, some of the guys I think are starting to get more comfortable with. I'm um, starting to figure out, try to figure out what they want to throw in certain situations. Uh, it's been tough. We haven't pitched real well on a consistent basis. Uh, you know, Jamie Navarro and Steve Traxel have probably been our most consistent guys all year. The other guys, uh, we've, we've ran some guys in and out. We've called a couple guys up from AAA. Uh, anytime you do that, it takes a little while to get to know what those guys like to throw. And, and also, those guys have to rely on my ability to, to know the league a little bit. So it's a give and take, you know, back and forth type situation. Uh, hopefully, you know, in the second half, we'll gel a little bit. Big thing is keep guys healthy. You know, Telemaco got hit in the leg yesterday, and uh, Mike Campbell's been down for a little while. So, big thing is we got to get innings out of our guys. Our bullpen's taken a beat in the last couple of days, and hopefully this series we get some our starters and go deep into the game. I think as you watch baseball on a deeper level, one of the things that I look for is is the chemistry between the pitcher and catcher, and and who's really calling the game. I know, you know, you get certain premier pitchers, the Roger Clemens, uh, uh, maybe at one point in his career, Oral Hershiser, certain pitchers. You knew what to ask them to throw in certain situations, but uh, with with some younger guys that you have, is is it a little bit of a struggle to find out what they're going to throw uh, as an out pitch? Well, the biggest struggle is uh, young guys a lot of times don't have the command um, to be able to spot their pitches exactly where they want to spot them. Uh, when they don't have that ability, it's tough to get big league hitters out on a consistent basis. And if you're trying to throw a fastball away, and all of a sudden that ball creeps back over the middle of the plate, and then a lot of times at this ballpark it'll end up in the seats. So uh, the big thing is getting the command of their pitches. And uh, once they get command of their pitches, it really doesn't matter what you call, because if you can put a pitch in a good location versus that hitter, you're going to get them out no matter what the pitch is. How about an adaptation on your part to say, well, you know, this certain pitcher, he has a great command of this one pitch. You know, maybe we can really just try to be fine with this, uh, this pitch uh, on 2-2 two, two counts. 
Yeah, you know, there's situations like that. Obviously, the hitter who's up the bet, you know, is going to dictate a lot of it. You know, if it's Barry Bonds versus, uh, you know, Ray Lankford, you know, guys like that are all a little bit different on where they like the ball and where they really can juice it. So uh, we're trying to, first of all, we're trying to go to our pitcher, pitcher strength. And then if the hitter's weakness, we, we take that into secondary. As you look at your lineup, uh, one through eight, what, uh, how do you feel the production has been, and, and do you think, as many do, that uh, a trade would benefit uh, from the power standpoint? Well, anytime you play in Wrigley Field, you like to have guys that can hit the ball in the ballpark. You know, it's a, it's a benefit here if you can have that. Uh, we, you know, we've been sporadic. We've had some guys, you know, hit some home runs in bunches and then be cool for a while. I've been one of those. I uh, started off great, and then I, I haven't hit a whole lot, you know, lately. But... Uh, I don't know. You know, that's not my decision. I go out and play every day. I uh, hope they put me in the lineup, and as long as I'm in that top eight guys in the lineup, I'm happy to be out there. As we wrap up, you look at your club. You're, you're still in contention. Uh, we're halfway through July, and you really haven't played your best ball yet. I, to me, as an optimist, I would say that still shows signs of life because in the next six weeks, uh, there should be a point where any good team catches fire. Yeah, you know, hopefully that'll be us. Hopefully we'll get put a streak together. But the number one thing that has to happen for put a streak together is you got to have consistent starting pitching. Those guys got to go into the sixth, seventh inning, only giving up two, three runs. You know, and then once in a while you're going to have to, to score runs in some bunches. You know, maybe win a game eight to seven or, or nine to six or something like that. And it's going to take a total team effort. There's not one particular area that I think that would just pick us up right away. Uh, everybody's got to do it. Pitchers got to do it. Hitters got to start being more consistent. You know, scoring four, five, six runs a game instead of just the two or three. And that's that's what it's going to take to put a streak together. I eat on the pasta twice just... Salerno's Restaurant and Pizzeria at Grand and Racine is the place to go before United Center Pavilion, Bulls, Hawks, Cubs and Sox too. Dine in or carry out with great family recipes, including homemade pastas, steaks, seafood, a great fun bar area. Meet people. Have a tremendous time at Salerno's Restaurant and Pizzeria Grand and Racine. You'll find a great variety of foods for you to enjoy at Salerno's. Elbow's Sandwich Shop is new. They got good stuff. Open 11 a.m. Monday through Saturday. Italian beef, sausage, meatball, steak sandwiches, parmesan, soups, Italian subs, salads. At 6316 Archer, right around Mobile, Elbow's Sandwich Shop. Really good stuff. Reggie's is a great place with tons of music, interesting people and staff, great food and drink at 21st and State. And amongst the cool things they have, Benkowski Trivia. I'll be back August 5th at 7 p.m. Reggie's, 21st and State, a fun place. It'd be a good idea to get to Beefy's, a neighborhood tradition since 1987. Easy to reach at 58th and Harlem. Besides their obvious Italian beef, they have a famous chicken sub, double cheeseburger great, dine-in, carry-out. Beefy's has a lot of stuff on the menu at 58th and Harlem. Go there. It's football, and the Bears could have taken a 14 to nothing lead. Curtis Conway making some nice maneuvers, but ultimately it was Olin Krutz who saved him on the fumble way down there. Bears had to settle for a field goal, though, and that was the beginning of the end. Then one of the wimpy plays of all time, Todd Sarburn. Oh, they're going to stop my kick, and he just gives up the ball. Here, take it. Here, you want to score a touchdown? Here, take it from me. And the Packers would go on, and that was a sick sight. No, that didn't surprise me. The young, you two young kids, we feel very good about. You know, we were able, we kept them here this year, and uh, knew that at some point when they got an opportunity, they would both go in and be able to play. How important oh, was it for Brett to play error-free football in the weather like this? Well, you know, it's very important because uh, you know the conditions out there are bad. It's hard holding on to the football, and uh, for him to go in and, and execute and get things done, especially putting together those drives that he put together, was, was outstanding from my standpoint. Did he prove today, as he always does, that he's just the best quarterback in the game? Well, Brett, Brett by far, is, uh, is the top quarterback in this business. And I think people are aware of that. Uh, you know, the bottom line, he, he did the things necessary today to, to help us win a football game. You know, I, th I thought we did a real good job. We protected well. Uh, in, in these type of conditions, it's no secret what you're going to try to do, um, especially like towards the end of the game. You're going to run it, and uh, and that sometimes that puts you in an awkward situation third and long. And we were able to convert, so um, we didn't change anything. We just we executed what we had, and uh, it was it was good enough for us. Matt, were these conditions worse in that Monday night game here? Uh 
were about the same? Ooh, it was, it was close, very close. Except this time, it was colder here today. And the last quarter and a half, I think we had ice and then some snow. So uh, it was pretty difficult. Is your defense coming around to be to give you guys a serious enough chance to go in? I think our defense each week has gotten better and better as, as I feel the same way about our offense. Special teams has gotten better. Um, and, um, you know, that's what it's going to take for us to get there. We've won three in a row, and, and in all three games we've played, we've played pretty well. But we can play better. We know that. Um, uh, and we just build off of it. In these conditions, and it was tough in San Francisco on Monday night. Those conditions were bad. Um, we played well. Now let's see what we can do uh, in good conditions if, if we'll get that. You know, we against good football teams, and, and that's what it's going to be here the next four games. Well, you definitely want to finish strong. You know, definitely um, at this point, I mean, we like I said, we have three games um, left. We we want to uh, win out, and we got to go um, and practice. Like you know, we can't just go in and say you know throw in the towel. We still got three games to play, and you know we got to go out and try to win those three. The quarterback, I know, is something that you can use for an excuse, but the rotating back and forth, any problem at all with that? Well, I, mean, I don't look at it as an excuse. I mean. We got to go out there and play regardless of who's out there, at quarterback or who's at receiver or who's at wherever. You know, we still got a game to play, and I think this whole team has enough confidence in everybody that it doesn't matter who's in the game. We all got to go out and do our jobs. Did the weather conditions take you out of what you guys want to do at all? Not for me. I mean, I mean, I've played in a couple of times, so it's you know, it's just some conditions. They got to play in it too, so you can't really use you can't use no excuses, especially when it comes to anything outside of you know what was going on on the field. They had to play in the same weather we had to play in. Curtis, is the next three games going to be an experiment, or should it be? Uh, it's, it's... I'm going into it like I go into every game, wanting to win, preparing myself to go out and do the best job I can on Sunday. And I mean, that's all I can really say about it. How this point, obviously, you know, there's hopes, you know, winning this game and right. maybe finishing off. I mean, your thoughts on that at this point? Um, me personally, I'm not really. I don't get hung up on on losses and wins and stuff. I like playing football. I love this game. I love playing the game, man. All I do is just go out and give 110% and do the best I can, try to do my job, and, and um, hopefully we'll come out with a win. So, I mean, like I said, I mean, at this point, I'm, I'm not going to prepare any differently. I mean, I want to win these last three games just like I wanted to win every game we played in, and I'm going to prepare, you know, prepare that way. Defensive signal caller Barry Minter made a great play early, but his team's defense cracked under the fire of pressure. Wins, wins. That, you know, that's, that's what the game is about, is win. Compete and win. So that's what I'm trying to accomplish. After ending the 10-game losing streak up there, um, does this do anything to change your opinion as far as the gap between the Bears and the Packers? Do you think you guys are on an equal footing with these guys? Or what's your opinion to that? I'm just waiting to see them again next year if I'm here. Let me get out. Thank you. All, and, and even if I did, I, I would have got, at that specific moment in time, I would have got labeled. So. All right, that's about all the time we have. Thanks for watching, and we will see you next week. This week's show brought to you by the Lansing Floral Shop. Call for your flowers at 708-474-1212. Huck Finn, a great wide-ranging menu, along with donuts and ice cream. Open 24 hours at Archer and Damon, 67th and Pulaski, and 105th and Cicero. In print graphics. Leaders in booklet, perfect bound, saddle stitch. Very competitive pricing. Call 708-396-1010.